If a gang of horrible monsters had you trapped inside a roadside honky-tonk out in the middle of nowhere, what would you do? They're fast, nasty, and man, are they hungry. And here we are looking like an all-you-can-eat buffet. With mediocre weaponry, minimal shelter, and no way to call for help, our only choice is to put these freak shows down before they tear this place apart. Of course, that's far easier said than done, especially with the random pack of losers that hang out in this dive. Let's just hope these folks are smarter than they look. I'm going to break down the mistakes made what you should do and how to beat the man-eaters in Feast. Tuffy's doing the best she can. As a single mom working a dead-end job out in BFE, her prospects aren't quite the brightest, but between full-time waitressing at the Salty Spittoon and carrying out the odd occasional <coughs> favors for her boss, she's somehow managed to eke out an existence for herself and her son. Besides, it's not like everyone else around here is doing that much better, and in just a few minutes, none of that is going to matter. For now, it's just another ordinary night of quiet desperation at the Bear Tavern. That is, until a blood-splattered man with a Model 870 walks in and demands their attention. However, this isn't your typical everybody stick em up type situation. The new guys come with a stark warning, as well as the severed head of something ugly. Question is, what did the rest of it look like? They got claws like Ginsu knives and more teeth than a chainsaw. And apparently, functioning eyeballs. What kind of moron puts his back to an uncovered window after telling everyone there's creatures outside? Probably the same kind of moron that would walk into a country bar with a weapon in his hands and say something tantamount to, do as I say if you want to live. He's lucky the old bartender didn't burn him with a side-by-side -side right off the bat. Not lucky enough to keep his head though. Well, that's fine because here comes the moron's wife to pick up where he left off. The good news is she seems to have a bit more going on upstairs than her other half. Using the pump action to jam the front doors before the beasties could barge in with some quick thinking, except it costs us a significant portion of our available firepower. So I'd start looking for a suitable replacement as soon as it was in place. Where she loses me, however, is her decision to lift up one of the tables and hold it against the broken window as if it'll just suction in place. What, are you planning to stand there holding it up forever? Not to mention the fact that we have no idea how strong they might be. Which is why Army Dude ends up taking a monster hand straight through his chest cavity. Should have simply closed the perfectly serviceable wooden shutter over it like they're gonna do two minutes from now. Instead, the window's still wide open and we just lost another one of our most capable fighters and yet another act of profound carelessness. And that's the least of our problems. Team Freak just heaved one of their offspring into another window. And believe me when I tell you this goblin was born to clap. I mean, just look at this little... Is it gone? What the fuck? Good thing it took a liking to Bambi, or this would have been a short film. Seriously, how do you even fight something like that? It's the size of a raccoon with claws sharp enough to slice through bone, not to mention that insane speed. I think it's safe to say at least one of us was going down no matter what in that scenario, and that's if we're lucky. About our only option would have been to flee that portion of the bar and hold up somewhere else, like the basement, at which point we might be able to take it out if it tries breaking through the door. Oh, yeah. Let me remind you, that was just a toddler. Imagine what the adults must be like. If even a single one of them gets inside, we are all screwed. So we need to focus 100% of our effort on making sure that doesn't happen. Luckily, we have plenty of available materials we can use to fortify our position. Problem is, this place is a lot bigger than it looks. There's three levels, including the basement. And with nothing but a few thin layers of wood separating each, we'll have to make sure they're all adequately reinforced forced to ensure they can't burst in from above or below when we least expect it. In that case, we need to get started right now, not after ordering a beer and making smart remarks about the situation, not after discussing the morphology of the creatures. Right fu- now. It's like everyone suddenly forgot about that time the monsters launched a face-eating baby through the window. And that's not all they forgot about. Tuffy suddenly realizes she left her son in the upstairs closet. Yeah, I get the feeling this isn't the first time that's happened to him. It's all good though. He's totally fine. All's well that ends well, right? I'm so sorry. <laughs> You 
were saying? Yeah, now that he's safe, let's stand with our back to the uncovered pane glass window and ball over him for 30 seconds. It's not like someone already got his head ripped off like that or anything. Besides, the whole reason for rushing up here was that you knew it was unsecured in the first place. Whatever. Good thing Grandpa was on hand to drive the creature off with some woefully inaccurate fire from his double barrel. Although, not before it could thoroughly coat 30 Rock with a double dose of pea soup. Evidently, young Cody didn't agree with it. Although something tells me that little buckshot sandwich would have given it a lot more than a stomach ache. Yet another reason we should have liberated the 870 from its life is a doorstop and got it back in the fight. A second shooter might have made all the difference in this scenario, especially one capable of sustaining a greater volume of fire. Meanwhile, the monster was almost completely stationary while blowing chunks. So how hard would it have been to Robocop the sucker? Now, in addition to losing a halfling and leaving his mom traumatized, we've given up partial control over the second floor. This gives the monsters a proverbial beachhead they could use to assault the rest of the bar. We've already seen them punch through a wooden table like it was cardboard, so what's stopping them from doing the same to a single interior door we're betting the house on right now? Instead, we should have kept a few firearms trained on the breach while some of our more gullible teammates sealed it off. There seems to be a surplus of boards we can use for this, but given the size of the opening, I'd start by nailing up one of the unused doors before piling on a few extra planks and whatever furniture we can find. We should take the same approach with the rest of the upstairs windows. However, with our limited manpower, we can't be everywhere at once. In that case, I say we get the main floor locked down first, since it's the easiest for them to attack. Afterwards, we'll finish clearing and reinforcing the upstairs as a group and then head down to the basement to wrap things up. Obviously, we could get this done faster by breaking off into teams, but that would also mean splitting up our already minimal firepower. And since we still don't know what it takes to kill one of these things, I'd much rather throw the kitchen sink at them than risk leaving it up to the bartender again. Another problem with only barricading the first floor like they do is that we don't have anywhere to fall back to if the monsters get in. If nothing else, I'd want to at least have the basement set up since it has the fewest points of entry. Of course, then we'd be fighting in a basement and they could still probably tear their way in through the floorboards. But it at least gives us some semblance of a second chance if things go sideways. At this point, you're probably wondering why I haven't suggested they try calling for help. Well, in true horror movie fashion, the local terrain is blocking all cell reception. As for landlines, their only phone caught a stray back when all hell broke loose, meaning we're stuck here until we either kill them all or someone else rolls through without immediately getting torn to shreds. I mean, I guess it's possible they might leave on their own, but I highly doubt that's gonna happen, especially while we still have one of their broodlings bouncing around the chest freezer. Speaking of which, the tribe has spoken, and now it's time for Mini-Me to shuffle off for good. Only, it doesn't look like the boss man's single action army has enough punch to get the job done. Guess it's time to upgrade. <laughs> Well, that's one down at least, and all it took was two shotgun shells and six rounds of 45 long colt. Oh, yeah, and as 30 Rock is quick to point out, that's one of the little ones. Sure, it's hard to say how many shots actually landed blasting through the freezer like that, but still, God knows what it's gonna take to put its parents in the dirt. The only reason we know they can even be killed in the first place is because Hero Chick and her husband nailed that one with her car, and I'm not seeing any freeways running through here. Whatever the case, we're really going to have to make our shots count and only fire when we have a clear line of sight on potentially more vulnerable areas like the eyes and mouth. Not only to have a chance at maybe bringing one down, but also for the sake of conserving ammunition, which is in extremely short supply here. But what if we don't have to fight them at all? No, that's actually a serious question posed by a resident motivational speaker known simply as Coach. The way he sees it, we just need to assert ourselves as the dominant species by putting the box troll's carcass on a stick and waving it around through a window for them to see. I have just three problems with that line of thinking. Number one, it involves opening the freezer. And given what we know the little demon's capable of, there's no way I'm doing that while it might be playing possum. Second, it involves removing one of the planks covering that window. And there is no way I'm doing that when they could very well chuck another baby at us. And third, hero dude showed up carrying one of their and they not only chased him here, but also ripped his 
head off. If we're gonna take that thing out at all, it's to cut it open and see what makes them tick. But because no one here apparently has the brain power to see how this could immediately backfire, they actually agree to do it. So let's see how it goes. Hey, it's working. You're a genius. See what I tell you. Yeah, they seem totally devastated. We basically just gave them extra protein. But wait, it gets even worse. After an embarrassingly brief monster mash, Mama Beast pops out an egg sack, from which two more of the freaks emerge. And by the looks of it, they're already looking to scrap. Awesome. They're like the Shriekers from Tremors, except actually terrifying. And since they managed to drag off Hero's body at the very beginning, there's probably a couple more running around somewhere that we haven't seen yet. Well, this just keeps getting better and better, but we're not completely hosed just yet. Turns out Boss Man has a working shortwave radio we can use to call for help. All we have to do is go look for it in the upstairs bedroom. You know, the one we completely gave up on without a fight. Yeah, it's pretty much a one-way trip for whoever gets volunteered to go up there. That is, unless we go in prepared and approach the task like our lives depend on it, which they probably do. I mean, think about it. The monsters are growing in numbers, and it's reached a point where we can't even look outside without getting our eyes ripped out. Although, yeah, probably a dumb idea to do that in the first place. Still, we'd have to be insane to think that they're gonna give up. And the way they keep probing the bar for weaknesses, it's only a matter of time before they find a way inside. Right now, our best chance at making it out alive is calling in some serious backup, if nothing else but to give the freaks something else to chew on while we make a run for our vehicles. In that case, I'm blitzing the house on this one. Forget sending in a sacrificial lamb to maybe get a single message out before winding up an entree. We need to arm every able-bodied person with whatever we can find and mob the place. Ideally, we'll want to bring the radio back downstairs so we can spend as much time as possible trying to reach someone, but if it can't be moved, we'll have to secure the area to the the best of our ability and transmit for as long as we can. The big ones might be tough, but the fact remains we were able to drive one off by shooting at it, so they're at least somewhat capable of fearing for their own lives. If anything, I'm far more concerned about running into more of the infants, so it'd probably be a good idea to bring some extra materials we could use to seal off the window while we work. Instead, the Brain Trust sends in Bozo with a quarter of her total firepower so he can lose it immediately while being eaten alive. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, half of us are back downstairs doing literally nothing when they should at the very least be trying to make as much noise as possible to draw attention away from that side of the bar. And yet, by some miracle, not only does the running man make it to the radio, he even manages to stammer out their location and ask for help before it gets yoinked into oblivion by one of the monsters, which is about a thousand times farther than I'd ever thought he'd actually get. All that's left to do now is GTFO. <laughs> Oh. That sucks. Nice knowing ya. I suppose the valiant thing to do would be to put our back to the door and give the double lot appetizer before it chews our arms and legs off. And since Bozo already popped one of the tubes back in the closet, we've only got one chance. In that case, I'd hold off until the monster was basically right on top of me to make the most of the muzzle energy and guarantee a hit. Luckily, it doesn't even come to that. As it turns out, Hero Lady can pick a jammed lock using nothing but plot convenience and a single earring, just in time to slam the door and pop a beastie's face. And in case you're wondering how I know it's a male, he gets a certain piece of his anatomy caught in the frame. Talk about a close shave. Monster! Shock in the door! <laughs> Well, it might not have killed him, but he's probably wishing it had right about now. Ridiculous as it may seem, this was actually a huge win for us. We've just proven that the adult forms can be injured through more conventional means. At least one specific part of them anyway. Plus, we've cut down their reproductive abilities and possibly even eliminated them outright if that was the only male. Of course, as you could probably imagine, Team Monster is extra p about this. Now, instead of simply probing for breaks in our defenses, they're actively tearing away at our fortifications. And fast. At this rate, we won't even make it to sunrise. At least, not without a visit from Uncle Sam. And given the extreme brevity of our SOS call, I'm thinking that's probably not gonna happen. The reality is, we have no way of knowing whether the rest of the world isn't up to its neck in these things as well. Although, you'd think a dusty sh like this would at least have an AM radio to pipe in some of that Conway 
Broadway Twitty. Regardless, with the walls rapidly crumbling all around us, holding out for a rescue is looking less feasible by the second. In that case, we're left with two options. Either shake the scene or wipe the whole lobby. And since we still don't know how many we're dealing with, it's hard to say which option has a better chance of success. Yes, Hero Dude initially claimed there were four, but I can't imagine he got a good look at them while running for his life. Plus, with their impossibly fast gestation period, there could be a dozen of the little ones zipping around out there by now. In that case, I say we opt for a hybrid approach. Make our escape while wasting as many as we possibly can. And I think I know just how to do it. You see, the bar we're stuck in isn't just a bar. It's also a restaurant. And assuming the stoves run on natural gas, we have enough ordinance flowing through the main to dig a mine shaft. And that doesn't even include the potential secondary explosion if the attached gas station cooks off. All we have to do is make sure the monsters are inside the blast radius when that happens. Fortunately, they're all just dying to get inside, so I say we give them exactly what they want. First things first, it's gonna take a long time for the gas to build up, so we should break the lines now to ensure we get the desired results. Meanwhile, I'd start looking for any sheets or tarps we could use to seal off the windows. Plastic would be best, but it doesn't have to be perfectly airtight. We just want to obstruct the airflow as much as possible to trap in as much gas as we can. Once that's done, we need to think trigger mechanisms. The biggest issue is the fact that we'll want to clack this mess off from far enough away to keep from getting barbecued ourselves. That is, unless any of our less mobile group members wants to be a hero. Looking at you, 30 Rock. Then again, dude doesn't seem all there right now. So it's probably best we go with some kind of timed detonation. In that case, our options are fairly limited. The simplest choice would be to shove some newspapers in a toaster and surround it with flammable materials. There's no telling how long it'll take to ignite, but my best guess is pretty d quick. So we'll want to hold off until we know the monsters are inside. As for how we let them in without getting munched on, I'd rig the pipe blocking the main doors up to a rope or extension cord and move everyone downstairs. When everything's ready, we'll unbar the door and lock ourselves in the basement, where we should be able to hear them coming in. Of course, we won't actually be able to tell when they're all accounted for, so we'll just have to wait until it sounds like a party up there, and then fire up the toaster. At which point, it's just a matter of bailing out through the loading doors and running for our lives. Naturally, with a plan as batch crazy as this one, redundancy is extremely important, so we should whip up a batch of Molotov cocktails we can lob at the bar's exterior in the event the trigger toaster fails to ignite. It also couldn't hurt to soak the interior down with as much high-proof alcohol as we can find beforehand to amplify the effects. Fact is, explosions can be kind of finicky. It takes a certain mixture of natural gas and oxygen to get the best results, so turning the place into a giant tinderbox gives us a plan B in case our gaslighting attempt ends with a whimper. Getting back to our plucky band of survivors, they opt for the explosive route as well, but on a much smaller scale. Instead of blowing up the entire bar, they decide to rig up the body of the late biker babe with an oversized hairspray bomb. The plan is to drop her out the upstairs window and let the monster swarm her, at which point they'll detonate the charges by plugging in the attached extension cord. The resulting explosion itself won't be enough to kill them all, but the thought is that it will keep them distracted long enough for the hero chick and coach to sneak over to boss man's pickup. However, this is where the wheels totally fall off. Not only are they banking on their ability to cross open ground without being promptly torn to shreds, they're planning on bringing the truck back to the bar to load up everybody else. And there's just no way that's gonna happen. Best case scenario, they make it to the vehicle and drive off to bring back help. But unless we're expecting the blast to render every single one of the creatures totally deaf, it's wildly unrealistic to think we'll be able to cram eight additional passengers into a two-door pickup without getting eaten alive. I'm not saying we bagged the whole thing. Thing. But we need to stay focused on what's most likely to succeed given we're potentially throwing away the lives of four people on this op. Actually, make that five. Ah! 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 Holy she's alive. Help. Oof. That really sucks for her, especially if you've seen the unrated version. My god, 
Oh, well, there'll be time for counseling later, maybe. For now, we just need to hope her sacrifice wasn't in vain. And spoiler alert, it totally was. Yeah, we wiped out two of the little ones, but it'll be awfully hard for our runners to sneak over to the truck when one of them immediately starts firing a shotgun up in the air. What exactly was the point of all that if Hero Chick was planning to lure them away from Coach herself? Now they know at least one of us is outside, which is only going to distract them from the the distraction. And of course, with everything having gone to she wants back inside. But wouldn't you know it? We went and sealed off all the entrances for some reason. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Surely, it couldn't be because there's horrible monsters out there that'll rip us all to pieces if they make it inside. It's like everyone but Meltman seems to have completely forgotten about that. Seriously, how is it that the dude whose brains are basically mush is the only one who's making sense right now? Besides, I thought she was supposed to be the hero. Maybe instead of expecting everything everyone else to cut their own throats to try and save her, she should just go back in through the basement window. You know, the one that's still wide open because nobody was there to lock it behind them? Yeah, remember that for later. Owen, oh, what's going on upstairs you might ask? Well, Bozo and Boss Man decided that right here beside the massive gaping hole in the wall is where they need to hash out the whole we let what's her name die thing, which is really making it difficult for them to see what's coming their way. You ain't got a chance without me, dummy. Nice one, Bozo. Do the words target identification mean anything to you? Nah, I can totally see how someone might confuse the petite woman for a hulking abomination draped in cowhides. Jokes aside, she did climb up to their position without saying so much as a single word. So, in a way, her death could actually be considered a team effort. Actually, you know what? She might still be alive down there. Oh, never mind. Okay. Things aren't looking great right now, and it seems everyone else would agree. Still, we didn't see Coach go down, so there's still a chance he was able to make it to the truck. I wouldn't bet my life on it, though. However, apart from luring them in for the fire trap play I mentioned earlier, I gotta admit, I'm running out of ideas. At this point, it might not be a bad idea to grab a few bottles and lay low in the walk-in freezer like Grandma's doing right now. As long as we stay out of sight, there's a chance they might think we got out somehow. I mean, it's an extremely small chance, but it beats making a run for it. And evidently, that's exactly what the boss man's thinking. The way he sees it, help is surely on the way. So while everyone else is busy getting themselves killed trying to pile into the getaway truck, he'll just lay there like a dead cat and avoid the aggro. There's just one problem with this strategy. They won't even notice me. <laughs> they like food that moves. Yeah, looks like they aren't picky eaters. Remember what I said about the basement window being left open? Really should have put someone on that, especially since all anyone can think to do in this situation is just stand around screaming at the floor. Not to mention the fact that we now have a literal pitfall just waiting for someone to fall through while we're fighting off the rest. And that's gonna be going down sooner rather than later, because it seems they just found themselves a battering ram. Bullshit! Huh, I guess he didn't make it after all. Well, time for plan B. We gather up all the weapons and ammunition we have and get ready for a fight to the death. Sadly, it isn't all that much. Boss Man's revolver might have a few rounds left in it, but any extra ammo was probably in his pockets when he got pulled through the floor. Biker Babe's 1911 might have a couple as well, but since no one bothered patting her down for a spare mag, we're stuck with whatever she didn't pick way in the beginning. As for shotgun shells, who knows whether there's any more besides the two already in the gun. Still, it's all better than nothing. While there's still time, we should head into the kitchen and start boiling pots of water and oil we can douse them with medieval style, particularly the one down in the basement. Would also be worth rounding up all the knives we can find and fastening them to the broom and mop handles to extend their reach as much as possible. Looks like Tuffy already thought ahead on this, but we'll need a few more to keep everyone in the fight once the ammo dries up. As for the Molotov cocktails Hot Wheels put together, we should appoint a couple throwers and position them behind the bar, well, they'll have a clear view of the front door when it comes down. Obviously, we don't want to use them when the monsters are already inside, so our only chance is to try and tag them at the threshold. However, for some reason, Bartender thinks this is a perfect job for 30 Rock. And, I mean, come on, man. Look at him. Like, I know it's all hands on deck right now, but maybe he'd be better off with something a little simpler. You know, like a decoy. Seriously, dude's just gonna burn
burn this place down all around us. Finally, and this one's pretty random, we sort of have a bear trap we can set up. It's not anchored to anything, but it take a grown man's leg off at the knee, so we might as well see how it works on these things. I'd set that up in the front of the door, but far enough back to be out of the way when they swing open. If we're lucky, that battering ram action will keep them from slowing down in time to avoid it. But of course, the Dream Team has a plan B of their own. Although, since Bozo cooked it up, you know it's probably going nowhere. Okay, no! Wow, that was super effective. But you know what might have been slightly more disruptive? Shooting it twice square in the chest from 10 feet away. Seriously, it was a sitting duck. In fact, we should have had everyone lined up with guns and Molotovs and let them have it the second we opened the door. All that Donkey Kong bullshit accomplished was soaking up two perfectly good shells without doing jack to help our situation, or so it seems. Turns out the real purpose of that sideshow was to smuggle honey pie deep behind enemy lines inside one of the barrels, the old Trojan keg. And just like with Team USA, the ruse totally works, giving the sacrificial waitress just enough of a head start to reach 30 Rock's beer truck and totally leave everyone else behind. Ah, oh, man, who could have seen that coming? Yeah, she absolutely made the right call there. Once again, how exactly do you expect to load up everyone in that thing without getting mogged on? Even if she could back the trailer up right to the front doors, there is zero chance they wouldn't immediately rip her out of the cab and pull her apart like a Barbie doll. At least now we know someone will be able to send help, provided there's still help to be sent, that is. Unfortunately, it will almost certainly be coming too late, because here comes the face reveal. <laughs> Well, that's horrifying. Wait, why is there only one of them? It turns out there were only three adults this whole time. And for some reason, they decided to split themselves up between each floor instead of concentrating their monster power and absolutely annihilating everyone in like 10 seconds. So yeah, that was pretty nice of them. Now we might actually have a fighting chance. I mean, how else could this happen? Not a good time to lose one's head. Indeed. And with Tuffy pinning the other one's arm to the ceiling, the rest of us are free to dogpile the leader. I mean, sure, 30 Rock got his melon split, but you know, who cares? For the first time since this nightmare began, we actually have the upper hand. All that's left to do now is administer the coup de grace. There's just one problem. The double-barreled shotgun is, in fact, a double-barreled shotgun. You forgot to reload, you... Idiot. No wonder your son died. Don't tell me we're about to fumble it on the goal line here. This is why we shouldn't have wasted precious resources acting out the plot of an NES game. Now bartenders pouring Shirley Temples and Bozo's like three seconds away from doing something stupid. I can feel it. However, luckily for everyone involved, he won't get the chance because it turns out this boomstick kills at both ends. <laughs> Bon Appetit. And with that, the last remaining survivors, Tuffy, Bozo, and Hot Wheels, are finally free to close out their tabs once and for all, provided they can keep the engine running. Actually, hang on, I forgot about Grandma. I guess hiding in the freezer was a legit move after all. Or maybe not. In the end, only a handful of our heroes made it out alive. And while we definitely couldn't have saved everyone, some pretty basic things like not standing with your back directly against a window or not firing wildly into the air during a sneaking mission could have kept a few more in the fight until the very end. Furthermore, had they made more of an effort to secure the entire bar from the very beginning, there's a good chance they could have used the shortwave radio long enough to bring in hell, which may or may not have solved the issue outright. But it Definitely could not have hurt. For these reasons, I think Feast was beat. Moral of the story, don't play with your food.